Hi, I'm Lazy Universe, and I'm White and Nerdy, and it's time for one of my infamous, infamous, movie reviews. So, welcome to a Lazy Universe movie review, and this is a movie that I've actually wanted to talk about for some time, uh, since I actually have picked it up, and it's back at the time when I picked up Charlie Brown Christmas as well, and that is, <clears throat> I would play the actual song, but YouTube copyright and all that. Also, I have a funny story before we get into the actual review. But first, well, what the Scooby do? We're coming after you. We're gonna solve that mystery. I see you, Scooby do. We're coming after you. What the Scooby do? We're actually gonna talk about Batman, the Believe in the Board meets Scooby Doo, not Scooby Doo meets Batman. So, uh. Zoinks, man! This review was a hard time making earlier! Yeah! <laughs> And this is kind of what I went through. So I was recording this video uh, earlier, and this is when you're seeing this, um, earlier when I pre-recorded it and uploaded it. And then I accidentally called the camera to kind of glitch out because I was pausing it way too often, which... Oops. That might have been what happened to the original uh, Power Ranger Geo Top 10. So I might have accidentally called that. So again... Oops. Well, that's pudding and pie on my face, Eeyore, and I might want a pot of honey. Well, oh, thanks for noticing. People don't love me anyways. If they did, they'd comment and subscribe on this video. Woohoohoo! We could do that all damn day. A lot of people might be like, how in the hell? I'll tell you what. At some point, maybe for 200 subscribers, you guys can give me a 200 <clears throat> impression challenge. I don't know if I could do every single one, but you are more than welcome to. We'll see if we get to 200 subscribers. So don't think that I promise in the net yet. Yet, at least. Because I'm only like, what, 30 subscribers behind by this point, I think. But anyways, Batman and Meet Scooby-Doo has been a property ever since uh, Hanna-Barbera did the Scooby-Doo movies. But, Hanna-Barbera, back during the 1960s, did a crime for children kind of solving thing, which was known as Scooby-Doo, which is still wildly popular even still to this day. And in case you're wondering, yeah, I am a big Scooby-Doo nerd, just like my father and my uncle. We all Scooby-Doo nerds. I love the Matthew Willard and Freddie Prince Jr. movies. I've seen the original series. I've seen what's new Scooby-Doo. I've seen a pup named Scooby-Doo, which is my absolute favorite, especially when Fred all the time goes, It must be my arch nemesis, Red Herring! And it completely wasn't Fred, so what the hell are you thinking? Except for the one time Red Herring was the actual enemy. And the enemy of this movie is, in fact, Red Herring! In case people started laughing at that, I encourage you to. But, no, he is not the main enemy behind this. So, Scooby-Doo, the Scooby-Doo movies was actually a way for them to kind of combine their property, which was famous, with other famous properties. They did this with Dick Van Dyke, who was a very famous and credited actor. They did it with uh, the Harlem Globetrotters, who are still famous to this day. They did it with the Adam Family, not the current version, the old version, the TV version, the one that I love. And then, of course, they did it with Batman and Robin. Not Adam West and Burt Ward. They did it with Casey Kasem and whoever did the voice of Batman. Adam West and Burt Ward would later voice Batman and Robin as well as Batmite. But, um, yep, this was a nod to Casey Kasem, who was also the voice of Robin as well as the voice of Shaggy. So, yeah. Enough nerding around, I say, while pushing at my glasses ever so newly. Let's talk about... Scooby-Doo meets Batman the Brave and the Bold, which honestly, I was a, kind of a film that I was like, really? I wonder how this goes. So it's actually pretty cool and unique, so let's take a little bit of a look. So in all honesty, when this film actually starts out, it has Scooby-Doo and the gang actually on a case from Batman who sets him up so they can join his unique duo or gang. The gang or duo in question might be a reference to Dress Free Dark or the Shadow Pack, but I honestly do not know, and the gang helped Batman with an unsolved case. The unsolved case, by the way, is not Batman solving his parents' murder. I honestly thought, oh, this is what it is, like I was trying to kind of solve it myself. No, it's actually a more 
I guess simple way of looking at it because it's a Batman and this and Digit Boulder is technically a mixture of the nineteen seventy Dark Age Batman and the nineteen, I believe, fifties like goofy but golden age Batman that people still love. Kind of like Adam West in a way. He he can be intimidating, but he's also like very campy and goofy at the same time. So he mixes in with Scooby Doo as well. But the backstory into why Batman is doing this has to do with the old Bob Kane and Bill Finger era of Batman, which I thought was like, okay, you know, they're trying to do something new. They're trying to do something kind of a throwback to the original Batman from the 1930s to the 40s. And see, the Bob Kane and Bill Finger Batman was more of a darker Batman. He wasn't much as brooding as he is in the series. He was a lot more darker and sinister, but he still wanted to protect the public. Unlike, you know, the Frank Miller Batman, who just wanted to see the whole world burn, and for goddamn sakes, he always said, like, damn and fuck and bitch and whore. He had Wonder Woman say sperm bank. All-Star Batman and Robin was a thing, people. I want you to remember that. All-Star Batman and Robin, while it had gorgeous artwork by Jim Lee, that was a thing. I want you to remember this. That was a thing. Keep that in mind. That was a thing. But, anyway, there is a throwback to the old, like, um, Batman series. They even call out one of Batman's more unusual foes, uh, Ashoi Milo, who, in the Batman The Raven of Bold universe, was eaten, was turned into she's, and was killed by Mark Hamill. I'm not even joking. Um, let me see what episode. And the episode, or the opening, to the episode Grillwoods in Our Myth, which is on... Sorry for the glare, but season two of Batman the Brave and the Bold, Mark Hamill, who voices Spectre, turned the show his Milo into cheese, and then he had scientifically genetic rats eat a show his Milo, so a show his Milo in the Batman the Brave and the Universe, except for in this flashback, is dead. Dear Lord, I'm a nerd. I think I need help. Uh, but anyways, um... A lot of the voice at the cast in this is actually pretty good. Uh, Scooby-Doo was voiced by friend of Don Mezic, Frank Walker, because unfortunately Don Mezic is no longer with us, but, you know, his voice still lives on in infamy. He was, um, I don't think he was Dino Mutt in Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt. I might be wrong on that, but he was the voice of Astro from the Jetson. I love you, Rush! And he also was, of course, Scooby-Doo. But, um... You know, Frank Walker reprises the role very, very well. Matthew Willard, who did the uh, live-action Shaggy, he does the animated Shaggy, and, of course, Edward Boulder is, of course, Batman. But we do have some other guest stars in this. Uh, John DiMaggio, Aquaman, of course, because he is outrageous. But Jeffrey Combs, one of my favorite horror actors, is the question, and... I want to see him as a question in a live-action DC movie because Jeffrey, or Mr. Combs, rather, is of the right age to do the question, like an older question, like a dying one, you know? So, Renee Montoya could become... I mean, she already is set up in the uh, Christopher Nolan films. She could become the question... Of course, if any WB executives or Jeffrey Combs watching this going, don't be stupid. Of course, probably they'd be nicer than that, but, you know, it's like, don't be stupid. So, the enemy behind this is actually a collaboration of two enemies, rather. Um, but the enemy that they have pitched for this movie is an enemy known only as Crimson Cloak. And it is like a throwback to both a Batman villain, which could be Red Hood, um, and it also is a reference to um, maybe a Scooby-Doo villain. Speaking of, the, there is a nice reference that John DiMaggio says in this movie, which I didn't catch on until I rewatched it, was he asked Batman if he lost another Robin, and I'm like, ah, that's a reference to Jason Todd, that actually is brilliant. You know, the Jason Todd that Paul Denny wanted to use in Batman the Brave and Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, but he couldn't use it, so he had to use a messed up Tim Drake instead, and oh my god, I'm a fucking nerd! 
Ah, why do you people like me? My brain is full of nerd knowledge that no one in the goddamn universe cares about except for certain people. Good lord, I'm a fucking nerd. Uh, but anyways, about Crimson Cloak. So Crimson Cloak in this movie was actually a pretty foreboding villain to happen for Batman because it's a ghost from his past coming to haunt him. But he's not a very intimidating villain, so to speak. No spoilers or anything, but you could probably tell who Crimson Cloak is supposed to be, even without me revealing it to you, truthfully, but he, two Batman villains teamed up is all I'm gonna say. So, you know, this has a lot of, like, really good art, good voice actors for a really damn good, um, you know, talent, powerhouse of voice actors, uh, including Matthew Willard, of course, infamous as he is as, um, Shaggy, I love his Shaggy voice, I think that he perfects Casey Kasem, uh, really, really damn well. I don't know how long that Massey Willard had been doing the voice of Shaggy, but he does it really, really well. And also, Frank Walker as Scooby-Doo, of course, is just a master in his own game. But it, this film, as both a Batman the Brave and the Bold and Scooby-Doo nerd, is this everything that I wanted? Well, yes and no. See, the negatives come on really quick because I thought that this would have been a more interesting, well-developed, you know, case motor like they did with Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated would have had more like of a serious tone to it or maybe do like um, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island have a more like serious and kind of scary tone going for it. Maybe Batman trying to solve the murder of his parents and it goes in a deeper, darker rabbit hole. Which I wouldn't have mind, but you know, this, this is a rated G film, so it's not for every for every kid. Um, but it does, the comedy is there, you know, like when Scooby-Doo and the gang and Batman go to fucking Arkham Asylum, it, it, it's brilliant. Uh, and that was kind of a darker tone, I'm like, oh, they're going to Arkham. They are going to Arkham Asylum, that is not a joke. They actually go into Arkham Asylum in this movie, and they end up meeting, like, Killer Croc, Bane, um, <clears throat> the Ventriloquist, Harley and Ivy, you know, they end up meeting all these gangsters, and I'm kind of like, oh, so that's a more serious tone, but it feels, and this is coming from a guy who loved Batman the Brave and Bold, and Scooby-Doo respectively, it feels more campy than it needs to be, and I'm saying that as a negative, not a positive. The positive is that they have a very good cast. I do like the mystery and how everybody worked together with Batman. I really do feel that this is, you know, gratefully respected. And I think this movie came out at the time when Adam West unfortunately passed away. Maybe if it de if they teamed up with the Adam West 66 um, DC series, maybe that could have been a lot more better, truthfully, because the Batman movies have more of, like, a darker, but also campier tone, but this wasn't everything I was expecting, truthfully. Granted, this movie is a fun ride from beginning to end, it has a lot of things that I and other Scooby-Doo and Batman fans can enjoy, but at times, it also feels like it's kind of boring and just a little bit repetitive. Maybe if they played more on the Arkham Asylum thing with Scooby-Doo in the game, meeting Harley and Ivy, that would have been so much better. But truthfully, it just was kind of more boring than it needed to be, honestly. And also, it does have a story, but unfortunately, and I know if I bleed, um, I'm sorry, I accidentally cut myself against my bed while trying to get something. It, um, in all honesty, I also injured my foot too. For walking around too much for my neighbor, but in all honesty, the story for Batman and Raven of Old is a simple story when they when he meets Scooby Doo in the game, but unfortunately, it does fall apart rather quickly, especially towards the middle when they go to Arkham Asylum, where they really should have played on that tone a lot more. Maybe have Batman and the gang get tied up in the Arkham Asylum and then they have to escape, kind of a reference to the game Batman Arkham Asylum. Unfortunately, that's not what we get in this, but one could wish. But the plot kind of jumps around too much. That's why, for me, my Funko Pop rating of this movie is going to be a Nightcrawler. So, uh, yeah, you know. And all the good D. Bradley Baker, who also does lend his voice in this movie, for everybody young and old, to be truthful... Check out Scooby-Doo in the movie, Scooby-Doo Meets Batman. 
Um, even the Scooby Doo Me Dick Van Dyke is a great one. I mean, hell, it's fucking Dick Van Dyke, for God's sakes. I mean, the man is a myth and legend. Have you seen him on Matt Cena a few weeks ago? The man is a myth, legend, and goddamn genius. And you know what? He's 97. And if he is watching this video, which I highly doubt it, or a family member of his, he still has the dance moves. He's still got the magic and the moves, and he still put a smile on my face, and I grew up watching both Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and also Mary Poppins. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you thought about Batman meets Scooby-Doo, or Batman and Brave and the Bold meets Scooby-Doo, or Scooby-Doo meets Batman and Brave and the Bold. Scooby-Doo meets Batman and Brave and the Bold. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. And again, I was a goddamn nerd to point out so many jokes and references. But the one I want to talk about the last is the reference probably to Justice League Dark, where Batman, The Question, Marsh Manhunter, Plastic Man, Black Canary, Detective Chimp, and for some fucking reason, Aquaman, are a team that solves mysteries around the world. I'm like, that could be a Justice League Dark man. A reference, it could be a Marvel Illuminati reference because the Illuminati did show up in uh, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. And it could also be a Shadow Patch reference, which is a very obscure DC team that solves mysteries and supernatural events. Or it could be a throw to Supernatural, who Scooby Doo also did a team up with in a movie. And I might have to check that one out at some time. But you guys will just have to stay put and let me know. So thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Keep nerding on, and I'm. Been in your universe, and I've been white and nerdy. Thanks for watching.